Humankind is spoken of in Genesis chapter 1 uh, in very important, very unique ways. It's important to take some time about that, I guess, since we have a vested interest in humanity, I hope. Uh, look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Uh, then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, after our likeness, so they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over all the creatures that move on the earth. God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Well, there's a couple of things from these two verses that, that are questions that people typically have. One of the first ones is, why is God plural? Uh, you get that, let us make humankind in our likeness. Uh, there have been a number of suggestions for what that means. Uh, some uh, suggest that God is talking to uh, the heavenly court. Uh, in other words, that there are angels around and, and he's simply speaking sort of let us uh, make humankind in our likeness. Uh, there are others who speculate this is one of the first indications of Trinity um, in, in the text. Um, that's, I, I certainly am a big fan of the Trinity as, as I'm a Christian and a born-again believer, a big, big fan of the Trinity. Uh, is, is Orthodox Chalcedonian Christianity, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I don't know that that's the, the simplest explanation of this. The, in fact, if you want to see this as an expression of Trinity, uh, you really are having to, you're going to have to go through some hermeneutical hoops uh, to make that a, a logical reading of the text. Um, the third option for why God is plural, and it's the one that seems to make the most sense to me, partly because it's the simplest, and that is that what we see here is the royal we. Uh, we said before that Genesis 1 is a very royal picture of God, and royalty always speaks of itself in the plural pronoun. Uh, even today, the Queen of England uses pro plural pronouns when she speaks of herself. Um, that sense in which the, uh, the, the leader embodies the nation. Um, and uh, you'll even sometimes see the president do this in speaking. You know, we are um, moving forward. We are doing this in the speaking as... Uh, although a single individual speaking as the nation. Uh, I think you have that royal we. It goes way back in time uh, here in Genesis 1 as well, where God is simply uh, speaking that, that in that position of kingship. Uh, let us make humankind in our image. Um, what does that mean, though? What does it mean to be made in God's image? Some options for this as well. Some important things to think about. Um, image, it's been said that it could be our capacity to love. That What does it mean to be made in God's image? Uh, I don't know about that one. I think I've known better dogs than people. Sometimes one of my favorite prayers ever is, Dear God, help me be the person my dog thinks I am. Um, so I don't know that our capacity to love is probably the best thing that, that uh, defines what it is to be in the image of God. Somebody suggested our reason or our intellect is what it is that uh, defines us, separates us from uh, other animals in, in, the, in the world. I don't know about that one either. I'm starting to see studies now where there are chimpanzees that are outdoing high schoolers on math. Uh, that's concerning for a number of levels, but at the very least, maybe reason and rationality is not the, the best, the simplest explanation for, uh, for what it is to be made in God's image. Um, whatever it is to be made in God's image, it is special. It is different. It, it, it sets humanity apart in some way uh, to be made in God's image. Um, but there's two sides to this coin. It is an honor. Absolutely. It is, it is important. It is special. It makes us different than the rest of all, all of creation. But there's a flip side of that. To be said that we are in the image of God is to, by definition, say we are not God. And that is where we're going to get into trouble in just a couple of chapters and pretty much for the rest of the Bible. Uh, the minute that humanity decides it knows better for its life and its own will than God does, that's, that is the definition of sin, is to, to no longer reflect God as the image, but to decide you are God yourself. You know, we are... We are dependent upon, to be the image of God means we are dependent upon God for our identity, for our very self and our purpose. And it would be like the mirror deciding, you know what, it doesn't want to reflect you. You're, you're boring, you're a pain, you're, the mirror's going to go its own way. Well, that's ridiculous to even think about, but that's basically what creation does, and, and that's how God's image works. It's also interesting to talk about image of God. Um, God forbids images of God later on, uh, any statues, any idols, uh, any graven images. It seems that humanity is the only legitimate image allowed on the earth, which I've always thought was an interesting uh, way to, to spin that story as you go through. Uh, the last thing, God offers humanity dominion over, the, over all of the earth, all of creation. This is an important because it's so often misused term. Uh, dominion is naturally a royal picture, a um, you have your dominion, the, the area in which you are ruling. Um, unfortunately, we tend to read that word with our eyes and, and want to define dominion our way. 
uh, this notion of it's good to be the king and I can do whatever I want and I'm special so I can treat things the way I want to treat them. That is not the biblical definition of a good king. Uh, a good king is a king who uses that kingship for God, for the people, for Torah. The bad king is the king who uses his position and his kingship to help himself. So the, the model of the good king, and by the way, it shouldn't surprise you, you know there weren't very many good kings in the whole history of the divided monarchy in Israel. Uh, there were two holy good kings without qualification uh, with all of those kings that were there. Most kings got into the position and decided to use it for their own selves, to use it to benefit themselves, to, to you know, make themselves wealthy, make themselves powerful, to make themselves status, to use their gifts to promote themselves. Dominion, from the biblical perspective, is to, to rule as God would. Uh, God rules with love. God rules with service. And the dominion that humanity is trusted with over all of creation is, is a trusting to, to be a king as God is king, to love, to serve, to protect, uh, to, to be good stewards of. Uh, in so many ways, this is not, although I've heard this verse used as a justification for, hey, we're the bosses of this earth, we can treat it however we want. Um, this is actually, when understood in the context of the Old Testament, a great cry for environmentalism, a great cry for environmental stewardship, uh, to actually be uh, the kind of king God is to us, to creation. So those are important questions that come out of uh, those two verses, and we're obviously going to get into more of those as we go.